Howie joining us today. This is Samantha Russell speaking from 20 over 10. And I am joined today by Kirk Lowe, who you can see there as well. Um, so thanks so much for taking some time to join us this afternoon. Hopefully, wherever you are is a little bit warmer than it is here in, in Pennsylvania. I think the real feels about um, eight degrees outside my window. Um, so we're gonna get cozy and I'm very excited to have Kirk joining us here today. Uh, this is the second time he's joined us for a webinar, I believe. Is that right, Kirk? It is, yes. So today's topic is all about podcasting. Um, so we're really excited to have Kirk because for those of you that uh, may not know, he has a very interesting, um, innovative, thought-provoking podcast of his own, um, all about um, podcasting for advisors and other marketing topics. Um, Kirk's got the 20 over 10 website pulled up here. For those of you who uh, maybe that were invited from Kirk's side of things and who are unfamiliar with 20 over 10, um, we are a uh, website platform where you can log in, create your own site, um, or work with our team of designers to build one for you. So you can go to 20 over 10.com to check us out. Um, if you click on the showcase tab too, you can see all sorts of examples of sites we've built. Um, and we've worked closely with Kirk's firm, Top Advisor Marketing, to build um, a number of these as well. So you can um, check those out, see what other advisors are doing, getting get some really great content from our blog um, on different marketing you know, best practices. Um, a few housekeeping things before we get started. Um, Amanda Larson from our team is gonna be behind the scenes uh, monitoring the chat and question and check question panel box. So um, for everybody who is here today, if you wouldn't mind maybe now um, putting into the chat box, you know, if you can hear us okay, if the audio sounds good, if you can see our screen, since we can't hear you, it'd be great to see um, some comments on that. If you wanna tell us where you're calling in from, I always love to see who, who lives farthest away. That's always fun too. Um, so throughout the presentation, if you just wanna make a comment about something, share a piece of advice, with other people on the call, maybe what's worked for you, the chat would be the best place to put that. If you have a question that you'd like either for me or Kirk to answer, um, feel free to put that in the Q&A box. So the Q&A box is for questions, the chat's really more for commentary, offering advice that everybody could benefit um, by seeing. So thank you so much. I have lots of uh, wonderful people saying the audio sounds good. Um, and we have Phoenix, San Diego, Scottsdale. Everybody's in a warmer, <laughs> a warmer climate. I'm jealous. Um, and I'm in Toronto, so it's it's fairly cold here. We just got through a wicked cold snap, so it's how, a little. Warmer how cold climate. are you? Who's who's the coldest? <laughs> uh, today it's not too bad. I think it's probably um, about minus five or something like that, which is <laughs> not too bad. That's minus five Celsius, so it's a little different. That's, oh, okay. okay. I don't know what that would be Fahrenheit. Probably. 20, something like that. Just guessing. All right. I see somebody from Houston, Texas saying it feels like 12 degrees in Houston. Wow. That seems pretty cold. Yeah, that is so, cool. Well, um, let me just give you a little bit more background on Kirk. Um, if you want to pull up the top advisor marketing website, Kirk. Um, so Kirk has been working with advisors for over 20 years. He is the go-to guy for branding and marketing um, for financial advisors, the founder of Top Advisor Marketing, which you can see here. Um, those, some of you may have known him in the past, um, working with Tactibrand, which was um, another firm that he founded. And he runs a podcast by the same name, Top Advisor Marketing. Um, and it's a really great podcast to go and listen to if you're someone like me who loves to listen while you're cooking dinner or working out. I'm sure all of you here have your favorite way that you love to listen to them, but he always has interesting guests and panelists come on and speak on a range of marketing topics. Um, and so he's going to teach us what he knows, tell us how he did it, how he learned all about it, um, and how he can help you start your own, or if you've already started one, congrats, how you can make it better. So without further ado, Kirk, um, I think I'll just pass it over to you. Thank you, Samantha. Um, we've been working with 20 over 10 for probably just under a year now, or a year, something like that. And um, I've been in the business for 20 years, 17 uh, top advisor marketing. And I will say that um, one of the things that I should have done a long time ago 
uh, was reach out to a company like, actually not like 20 over 10, but specifically 20 over 10, because we've been looking for a website partner to help our advisors create um, better websites uh, more efficiently um, and more cost effectively. And um, 20 over 10 is so efficient at doing it. Their platform is so robust and they are so easy to work with. And when I mean easy to work with, I don't just mean me. I mean, the clients, um, every time they reach out, uh, somebody at 20 over 10 is always getting back with very thoughtful uh, recommendations. And um, I'm extremely grateful because it's made a big difference in my business, um, having a partner like that. I, I think all you can probably relate to that. When you find a good partner who really does their job well, they'd make you your service uh, that much better. So thank you. Uh, thank you. So and I think one of the things that I love about 20 over 10 um, commercials almost over here is uh, <laughs> Samantha in particular um, provides uh, a heck of a lot of um, wisdom and she's always researching stuff and uh, always looking for good value partners to contribute um, thoughts and ideas. And I think that's a, a huge win for 20 over 10 because uh, 20 over 10 is helping advisors, I think, well outside of what you might expect them to do. And I'm always grateful. And I find the content that uh, Samantha shares on a, on a frequent basis has got a lot of quality to it. It's light, so it's easy to understand. And uh, they're extremely helpful. Um, she's uh, If you're not following Samantha on LinkedIn, uh, you ought to because Samantha shares uh, wonderfully uh, on social platforms. She's a good role model for, for all of us. So today I'm going to talk to you. Oh, I, I didn't want that slide to show first. That was, my, that was my punchline. Oh my goodness. Anyhow, I wanna to talk to you today about podcasting. So uh, I've been, as Samantha mentioned, I've been running a podcast called Top Advisor Marketing since January of 2017. So we just hit the one year mark. I've never done anything like this before. And uh, it was, it was, uh, it's been a really wonderful journey and uh, so wonderful that we've been sharing it with advisors and now have, I think, 15 to 20 financial advisors who were running podcasts uh, two a month through our company. And we, uh, we do everything for them except for uh, come show up to the mic and say smart things for 20 to 35 minutes. And um, it's, been a, it's been a great journey, but a lot of fun, uh, lots of learning. And I'd say, honestly, the results are uh, better than I expected in a couple of cases. And I'll explain those as I go through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two phases to this presentation. There's going to be the presentation phase where I go through bullet points. I'm going to fly through those. If anybody needs me to slow down, please um, chat Amanda and she will cue me to slow down because <laughs> I, like, I would prefer to go fast here. Uh, in the second phase, I'm going to go on a bit of a marketing rant, and I want you guys to join me and experience um, how I feel, really, really feel about podcasting, which goes beyond the bullets, okay? So um, I'm just going to show you this inside a Google slide form. Um, I think you got, actually, I can, let me see, view, okay, conflicting. The present button is all the way to the right. I'll be there. Oh, thank you. Here we are. So how to start your own financial podcast. Why would you even want to do something so crazy? <laughs> so yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people are listening to podcasts. To be honest, this data is six months old and I ought to go change it. Uh, it'll probably be coming out with new data here very soon at the start of the year and I will go uh, update this. But as of 20, uh, January 2017, uh, there were 112 million Americans that have listened to a podcast, 67 million on a monthly basis, 42 million on a weekly basis. That's a lot of people, folks. Uh, average of five, they average five times a week, five podcasts a week, the average listener. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the, the largest uh, demographic of podcast listeners is 25 to 54. And that's not a bad, that's not a bad age group. And that's an age group a lot of advisors are waking up to, right? You know, I talked to an advisor this morning his clientele is uh, 65 plus, most of them. And he's reeling. He's, he said, I'm not, I'm not growing. I need to reach out to the younger audience. He said, I used to attract the younger audience with my website, some of the stuff I was doing, but it, it's not cutting it anymore. I need to be different, better. I need to be doing more stuff. I need to, you know, he was running seminars, doing postcards. He said that those things aren't working with my audience. And that's, um, that's, a, that's good learning there. 
Uh, two thirds of people are listening to podcasts on a mobile device. So some people are actually listening to them on a, a desktop, which is interesting. So that work uh, more than likely. 52% listen at home, 85% listen to most of the podcast or the full podcast. And it's typically a more affluent and more educated audience. So that's, that's interesting information, right? Uh, it's convenient, easy, fun, inexpensive, and it's very inspiring. And we're going to get into those details. So I'm going to talk to you about 10 benefits of podcasting. Why should you consider podcasting? Because number one, and not necessarily the important, most important, but it's instant deep credibility that resonates with your audio audience. It's pretty interesting if you're doing a podcast to your audience, I will tell you that. Whether they believe in podcasts or even know what the heck a podcast is, if you're doing one and you're, and you're, and you're promoting or somebody's introducing it, that's instant credibility. A lot of advisors could use more instant credibility. You're in an industry that doesn't get as much as it ought to for a whole bunch of reasons. And one of them is the internet and one is the profession itself and some of the stories that travel that seem to travel a lot better than the good stories, right? So uh, instant credibility is a great thing. Top of mind awareness um, and you're not necessarily, and you're not interrupting them, right? Because a podcast generally gets them when they're out looking for it. It's not you, you know, knocking on the door, emailing it to them necessarily. It's, it's there because they found it. They came across it. They were introduced to it, right? So those are two important points. Number three, more, more referrals than ever before. If, if you are wondering why you don't get referrals, it's because you're not doing anything interesting, to be quite honest. It's not about how you ask. It's not about how often you ask. It's about what you're doing to inspire people to want to have conversations about you. Having a podcast is a much more interesting uh, conversation than if you're not doing a podcast. I hope that makes sense. Number four is that it significantly increases your search engine results with organic or original content. Ask Samantha, she will tell you that the people who have their own content do much better than the people who are buying content and are not using content. So search engine is a real opportunity for people. I don't particularly focus on it. I like to think of a search engine uh, opportunity as a bonus, if that makes sense, right? If it happens, it's a wonderful thing, um, but do the right things and, the, and good things will happen. That's what a lot of marketing should be seen as, right? Do good, good things and good things will happen. Number five is daily expansion of your digital network, even while you sleep. Uh, people listen to podcasts, obviously all times of the day, different countries, which may or may not apply to you, but it's still good to get exposure. And um, so that daily expansion of your network is huge because if you're not growing, you're in trouble, right? Especially online. Number six, it enhances your focus on what you do best and how you create value. Just think about that for a second. If you are, if you write all the time, if anybody, if anybody listening has been a blogger, you will be able to identify with this right away. When you start blogging, it makes you a better financial advisor because it helps you focus on how you write and communicate and be better at it. It also, you also have to uh, challenge yourself to find uh, content that your audience is going to resonate with. That's going to resonate with your audience. So you're constantly pushing the envelope as far as what do clients really want from you? What do they want to hear about? What do they care more about? You may know that they need that they need to listen to 10 different topics, but they only want to hear about five of them, right? So you're going to focus more on those five than you are the 10, the full 10. I mean, you still want to be, you still want to do your job and have a diverse offering, but anyway. Um, so enhancing what you focus on and what you do best and creating more value is, is a great thing. Number seven, it attracts clients who enjoy working with you most. When you do a podcast, people get to experience you. They get to experience your personality. Uh, is he a fast talker or slow talker? Um, uh, does she, what, her, what are her personal interests or, uh, you know, what, is, what community does he live in? What, is he, what does she like to do in the community? Uh, there's all, you know, all kinds of interesting things. How smart are they? How do they communicate financial planning to a client? Do they use a lot of jargon? There's all kinds of things um, that people can experience, your personality, um, how you operate. And if you do a good job in your podcast, which is not that difficult to do, um, especially if you've got a good partner to help you, um, it uh, can be a tremendous way for you to attract people who, who like you, right? And that's that's what a lot of this comes down to uh, in businesses is people, are they attracted to working with you? You know, yes, are you smart? Do you understand them as an audience, as a person, a business owner, whatever it may be, but they want to know that they can enjoy working with you. So that's a huge part of podcasting. It's not, you know, it's difficult to achieve that in print, right? 
it's difficult to achieve that. You can achieve that in a seminar because you're up in front of everybody. But a lot of times in a seminar, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're in front of everybody on stage. It's not as easy to pull off on a podcast. You can be much more personable, uh, laid back, things like that. Hopefully that makes sense. Number eight positions you as the trusted expert. If you can talk about things that position you as an expert with a niche audience on a niche uh, subject matter, uh, that's a tremendous win for you. And a podcasting is a great platform to do that. And a lot of advisors are wasting opportunities to do this because they do not like writing. How many of you have white papers? Um, how many of you paper write? write a, how many of you uh, listening today write a blog post every week, right? Or every month? I mean, it's not many. And um, the other thing about writing too is that it does take uh, some time and some skill to be able to be a good writer. Um, it does not take as much work to be a good podcaster. Um, I'm not giving myself any credo there, but anyway, <laughs> I do. I have a blog too. So um, I, I don't focus on being a great writer. I focus on delivering as much value in how, I, in how I write and speak as I possibly can. And I think that's important to remember when you're doing this. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be yourself and give as much value as you possibly can. If you hold things close to your chest and you, and you think and you don't live with abundance when you're talking or sharing uh, your wisdom, uh, people will catch on to that. So you have to be able to share. As long as you don't say stuff, it's going to get in trouble from a compliance perspective. Number 10, one of the most important things is fun. Remember that. I'm going to talk about it again. So here's some stuff. If you decided, hey, um, it's great listening to Kirk. He has some valid points. I'm going to start my own podcast. Here's some stuff, some equipment that you'll need. Equipment was too long, so I went with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so Can uh, you give us a breakdown too, because I had a couple people ask who were signing up for this of like, yep estimate costs, maybe that would be helpful too. I'll try to do that as we go here. So a microphone, a uh, hundred bucks. And I will share with you uh, a link. Uh, Amanda, if you could remind me to send you a link to a page on my site where I actually show them what equipment to buy, sure. um, I will do that. Yep. Perfect. Um, so you're gonna need a microphone. You're gonna need a directional mic like this one, if you can see it in my video. This is called a Sure mic. And it's directional. So if I go over here, you can't hear me as well, right? It's got, it's got some uh, noise canceling and stuff like that. So when my kids come in, because i work been working from my home for 17 years, uh, they're noisy right over there. So this doesn't pick that up. Anyhow, um, even though I have this office completely uh, uh, insulated for sound. Boom. So yeah, I want to have a boom here. So if I hit my mic um, or it moves or hit my desk, you don't hear a lot of noise. That's why you want to have a boom. Uh, headphones keep you from getting distracted from ambient noise as well. Uh, pop filter is this thing right here. You're going to want one of those. You're probably going to want a podcast house if you've never done radio or podcasting or something like that before. So a podcast house would be a colleague who understands enough about your business and who's just got one of those inquisitive people who's okay being second fiddle on a podcast because you're going to be first fiddle or first violin, however you want to call it, if that makes sense. So if you need a post, uh, a host, because you want to have two, it's good to have two people on the podcast. If it's just um, one person going, it's not going to be as interesting. So you want to be able to banter, have a little bit of fun. Um, you're going to want a vanity URL for your podcast. So whatever your name you come up for your podcast, make sure you have a URL uh, for that. So you own that. A lot of times when you put up a podcast, you're going to use, uh, uh, actually, this isn't, uh, equipment you need. So I'll go to that next. So Skype is some software you're going to need. Um, we, uh, we do all of our podcast recording through Skype. You, you're going to get an app, an add-on to Skype called Call Recorder for Skype. And you just record and it records as an MP3. So you'll be all set there as far as recording. Um, in some okay, cases, you can... charge for that, Kirk? Uh, I uh, Call Recorder for Skype. Sorry, I was I'll, I'll go back and give you all the prices. Uh, design okay. software, um, you're going to want to use Canva. Canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. It's incredible software. Um, it's, it's basically, you don't have to be a designer to be a designer now. Do not, financial advisors, please do not stop financial planning and be designers, but you may be able to have your assistant uh, do stuff or hire a designer to do something nice, put it in Canva, and then you can adjust it for multiple use. Anyway, audio editing software, you're going to want something called Audacity, and you can get Audacity for free. Uh, voiceover professional, you can go to fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, and you can hire a voiceover professional. For about 40 bucks, they'll put music in, they'll do an introduction to your podcast, right? 
and um, they'll also add some uh, some music in the background. That can be your introduction to your podcast. You definitely want to do that. That that's a really fun way to introduce your podcast and makes you feel super professional right out of the gates. You don't. You're not going to when you record. You're just going to have an audio editor add that that uh, what we call an intro into the uh, the audio file after you've done your uh, your bit. Okay, so microphone about hundred bucks. Boom is about fifteen bucks. Headphones are about fifty to hundred dollars. Pop filter is about twenty, fifteen, twenty. Podcast house, who knows? <laughs> uh, Vandy URL about fifteen bucks. Skype is free. Call recorder is it's either ten or twenty bucks or it's free. I can't remember. Design software is Canva.com. There's a free version of it. If you pay, I think it's maybe eight bucks a month. It's nothing. It's an uh, incredible uh, tool to have access to. Audio editing software Audacity is free. Voiceover professionals about 40 to 50 bucks on Fiverr. Audio clips, uh, go if you're using somebody, so that an audio clip I, um, is like a music clip. I think that's what I mean there. Um, a voiceover professional would likely have their own music to put in there, but if you want to choose your own, go to audioblocks.com. I think it's a hundred bucks for a subscription for a year. If you don't want to use Audioblocks, just go look for um, royalty free music clips and you can get one there. So we're uh, talking two to 400 bucks, depending on what you pick. There you go. Pretty Not cheap. Bad. Yeah. I just put the links for Canva and Fiverr in the chat box for everyone. We'll make sure that we um, link to them in the e-blast as well with a list of all the sources. But um, I just want to say we use Canva here internally all the time too to make, you'll, you'll probably see a lot of times social media posts where people have a background and then text over the image. Um, and usually if, if it looks good, they're probably just using Canva, um, yeah. honestly. Canva really? is just, it's incredible. And uh, if for social media, it's, it's the bomb. I think that was a cool thing to say. But oh, somebody just brought up, you need a place to host the podcast afterwards. Yes. I was going to bring that up later, but oh, I'm trying okay. to think if I, yeah, I, I don't <laughs> want to go ahead. Uh, so yeah, so place to podcast. So there, there's SoundCloud, podbean.com. There's some podcast communities that have podcast players and you can, you can build your own, I call them channels. You can cr create your own podcast channel and that houses all of your podcasts and it's made to do that. It also counts all of your, and I'm going to show you a Podbean example of one of our podcast clients here in a little bit. Um, you're also going to want um, a mind mapping software. So why I say that is because you never want to write a script and I'm going to get into this. I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit here, but I think it may actually fit here better. So mind, so if you use, if you go to mindmeister.com as an M, I think it's EI or IE. Let me see here. Got it on my other side. EI. Yep. So mindmeister.com. You can get a free version up to three maps. What you want to do there, and then it's like five bucks a month if you want to subscribe. Mindmeister, when you're doing a podcast, you want to have a mind map in front of you. You want to have an outline. You want to have key talking points, sound bites. You do not want to have a script. If you're reading a script, you're done. You're going to be super boring and it's going to be, you're going to be easily distracted on a podcast. So you want it to be natural, organic, authentic, whatever you want to use. Um, but you you should start with a mind map that mind, the better the mind map is, but the more talking points and try to number stuff too. I'll get into that in a sec. Um, because that makes it, it's easier for people to follow on a podcast. So some best practices here, you want to stand. I am actually standing at my stand up desk. You have a lot more energy. You can throw your hands around. Usually you're not in video looking like a maniac, uh, a warm drink at hand. Um, if you can. Um, make sure that you have a mute button or you know how to mute yourself because if you got a cough or sneeze, you don't want to blast somebody's eardrums uh, or have the audio or you have to do some, do more work. If you're in the middle of trying to say something and you lose your train of thought, just pause. You do not need to go super fast all the time. So don't, you know, just pause, collect yourself, keep going. Practice your intro. Uh, the intro kind of tees up everything, gets you energized, gets you in a, in, a, in a zone. So practice your intro so that way you kind of hit the ground running with your podcast. Use an outline, not a script. I already talked about that. Sound bites. And you always want to tell stories, stories that you're allowed to tell. Stories connect people. They're the application of what you're preaching. 
um, and how people are, how you and or your clients are leveraging what you're doing. So when you can tell some stories, connect, connect financial planning to people's lives and things like that, if that makes sense. Have a clear call to action. Do not end the podcast without directing somebody somewhere. And I'll have one at the end of the show for you guys at the end of the show, <laughs> at the end of the webinar and have fun. Um, if you're not having fun presenting and you're trying to be too dry and too, you know, all, all business, um, it's not going to be as, it's not going to be as engaging. You won't be as engaging and you're not going to have as much fun. One of the questions that came in just now that I think is relevant here, um, Jen White asked, do podcasters have to be in the same place physically? Now this is a little behind the scenes secret that, um, not everybody might know that you, anyone who listens to Top Advisor Marketing, you and Matt are not actually in the same location. So do you want to explain how that works? Yeah, that's why we use Skype. Sorry, I should have been more clear. So we, uh, Matt and I use Skype. So he's in his office in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I'm in my office um, just east of Toronto. And we just Skype each other and we record that. So Skype records both him and I. And he so does all no the recording. editing that you have to do afterwards. It just uh, there is editing. We we definitely edit. We have a we have an editor. Our editor is in the Philippines. He's a young audio editor. Um, he's very inexpensive. Does a great job, and um, he's a lot. Of, he's, he's very competent. So you can find audio editors. You could go to Fiverr.com and find audio editors. There's all kinds of places. But you should okay. get somebody to to. Um, balance out the ums and the ahs the pauses you know things that i do all the time <laughs> but if you didn't have the editing the person editing you didn't you don't need to splice two different pieces of audio together it, no it nothing like that no it's one audio file with both of us speaking perfect Great and matt question. matt requires way more audio editing than me Just like, <laughs> it's not even close actually I'm tell him actually that. for fun last week one of our partners ray he counted how many ums, ahs, so yeah, and it was it was hilarious. And he sent like a, a matrix, like a spreadsheet of how many times we did it and just poking fun at Matt and I. And it was, uh, anyway, good humor. <laughs> we need to improve in that area, apparently. So how to leverage. Um, if you're doing a podcast, there's some, there's some interesting tactics. One is getting guests. So Matt and I bring guests onto our, our podcast all the time. Guess what? After we bring a guest on, if they're people who work with other advisors, they share our podcast with other people, right? So um, Samantha knows that me doing the webinar here, when she gives the replay that I will share this with my audience, which will get, send more people to 20 over 10's way. Um, business works that way. Uh, synergistic uh, marketing is a wonderful thing. And uh, so bringing on guests is an incredible tactic if you're going to be doing a podcast. And so I highly recommend uh, bringing on guests. Um, I was a guest on your podcast and I shared it multiple different times throughout mm -hmm. because it was a great, a great topic that was more evergreen in nature too. So it, do, it yeah. doesn't mean it's just even going to be leveraged that day or that week. You know, I was a guest yep. back in, what was it, October? And I could share that again tomorrow. Maybe I will. Um, Cause it was about ways please to do. Please do. Make, make your website a workhorse. So it's still relevant today. Um, so that's a great point. Absolutely. To be honest, any podcast that's more evergreen is more valuable. So, you know, I've, I've kind of fought, if you will, for, for years with advisors about doing economic updates because they're, they're not worth anything unless somebody wants to go back two years and see if you were saying the right things. Um, the truth is, is that when you talk about subjects that in life and things that are going to be applicable for a long time, that, that podcast is worth more because it has shelf life and shelf life is a wonderful thing. Just think about if you spend money on a Facebook boost and you spend 500 bucks, or if you spend five, you know, when that boost is done, that 500 bucks is gone. If you, if you create a podcast and the podcast is there for five years and, and, um, and, and it adds credibility and from time to time, somebody loves the subject and they click on it or it gets you all kinds of SEO value because of the topic that's worth way more than 500 bucks because it lasts. That's way better 500 bucks spent in my opinion. It's one of the, one of the other reasons I absolutely love podcasting. So when you publish podcasts, you're going to want to publish them to multiple places if you can. So look for podcast communities where you can publish. Publishing is different than syndicating. Publishing means you actually physically upload your podcast to that podcast platform. So Podbean, SoundCloud are two, two of them. There's, there's more, but those are two of them. Syndicating means you go to iTunes, for instance, and you tell them, 
I have a podcast on Podbean. Here's my RSS feed and iTunes automatically um, takes your, or sorry, Podbean feeds your podcast into iTunes and every one time there's a new one, I think it's within 24 or 48 hours, iTunes will pick it up, verify it, and now you're on iTunes. Um, Stitcher, there's all kinds of syndicated podcast communities. So with our service, we do, I think, five published uh, podcast channels and uh, 15 plus syndicated uh, podcast communities. And we set that all up for you. It's part of our service. Uh, Multiplying means, hey, if you've got a podcast, you can pull out quotes from your podcast. You could put them on a quote meme card. Um, You could put your, you could turn your audio into a video, put it on YouTube. That's one of the services that we do uh, with, um, with our podcasting service. And you're going to, so you can multiply content. So one podcast can be more things than just a podcast, right? It can be a video, it can be, you could pull out quotes. There's interesting things. You could just do a little sound bites, pull out sound bites, share them on uh, LinkedIn or wherever you want. Make sense? Perfect. Sharing. Um, a lot of financial advisors really struggle with social media. What am I going to share? Uh, you know, I, I'm not writing my own content. I'm sharing other people's content or I'm, uh, curating other people's content or I'm buying content, sharing it, and they just don't know what to do. And they're either, they either replicate the same thing way too many times or they're sharing stuff um, that, um, that isn't them. So they're not getting value. They're not getting uh, attribution for the, for the wisdom. And the third thing is, is that they're, um, they're not sharing much at all. So they're not really truly leveraging social media. Um, the thing about social media is what, about podcasting is you have, two podcasts a month, you can turn it other pieces of content. You don't just want to share your podcasting stuff, right? You want to share maybe that you've got a white paper. You want to share stuff you're doing in the community. You want to share stuff that's a personal interest. You want to share stuff that your centers of influence are doing. But um, if you have your own podcast, that is much more interesting to share. Just don't share it every day. Hopefully that makes sense. You I, definitely want I, to be sure. There's a couple questions that are relevant to this point, um, it, which is how often, what's, you know, what should be the cadence of how often is it once a week? You mentioned it twice a month. And then what would be like an optimal length of an actual podcast episode? So on LinkedIn, I wouldn't share maybe, maybe once or twice a day. No, no, Facebook. no, I'm sorry. I think the question was Kids? how many, like how many podcasts should you be producing? Oh, one okay. a week, one a month. Sorry. Uh, we recommend a minimum of two and two as much as, and as much as one a day, if you're, I wouldn't do one a day, actually, that's crazy. <laughs> um, there are people who podcast every day, but they're full-time podcasters. If you want to call them, um, I would say between two and four a month is pretty fabulous. Okay. And then what about the length of the actual episode? Between 20 and 35 minutes. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't mean you can't do a five minute one. We have a, we have a new, uh, new uh, podcaster who's been podcasting for about two years, I think. And we're super excited to get her as part of our uh, group of podcasters. And she does this little thing where she actually tells a client story and she doesn't talk about the financial specifics. She talks about the life and the, and the obstacles and the things that, that they wanted to solve and get out of their, their money. And so it was more of a storytelling and she's done about five or six of those. And um, we haven't, we haven't taken over her podcast. We're just in the process of, of doing all that work. Uh, but she says she got some really good, um, really good uh, uh, use out of um, well-traveled, th- those podcasts traveled well and did well. So we're excited about doing those. So what I mean is you don't just have to do the exact same type of podcast every time you do one. You can mix right. it up a bit. Um, get traffic. If you can find places outside, outside of the podcast communities where you can get your, your podcast um, um, some legs and get some traffic, that's a great idea. We do have a podcast. We do have a media partner that we get free traffic from. They've been a huge uh, advocate for us. And we actually have our own channel there called Financial Podcasts uh, with this media partner. And um, if you're working with us, you would get free access to that media partner and there's no charge for it. We just, just helps our podcasters kind of hit the ground running and I'll show you. Um, it, it's important because if you get more downloads, p- real people listening to you, that adds a ton of credibility when people come to your podcast page. So um, that's it for this part. I'm going to, I'm going to give you my call to action right now. 
So this is for you guys. I have all kinds of free resources on something on a page of my site. So topadvisorm.com and top right, it says advisor you. If you click on that, or you can go right to topadvisormarketing.com forward slash advisor dash you. There's all kinds of free white papers there. There's uh, all kinds of neat stuff. We are going to be adding to that quite a bit in 2018. I've got some colleagues uh, who are business coaches and uh, he's, man, uh, Joe Lukacs, he's incredible. He's got all kinds of business planning resources we're going to be adding. I don't know when, probably Q2 sometime. Um, and they're really fabulous. And he's a really, really bright guy. So, and he's been working with advisors for 20 years. So uh, we're going to keep adding resources here. I think we've got somebody else who's going to be contributing some stuff um, as well. Samantha, I'm going to be coming to you guys for some stuff. Uh, so there's all kinds of free resources there on branding, podcasting, um, marketing, digital marketing, social media, probably more than that too. Podcast, our podcasting services, uh, and, and do not do not bug out because I'm not done my presentation yet. I'm just giving you the call to action now while you're still awake. This is good. A bunch Hopefully. of people are asking about this okay. now, so it's good timing. So our podcasting service, we do three things. We produce your podcast, we publish your podcast, and then we promote your podcast. So promoting is, um, so um, if you want to learn more about that, you can go to topadvisormarketing.com forward slash podcasting dash service. That is a landing page. It's not our actual site but you can go back to our site, obviously, to topadvisormarketing.com. But podcasting service, you can learn more about that. If you want to talk to somebody, there's the phone number. It's totally free. And um, uh, somebody will help you figure out um, if podcasting is right for you. I am going to give you, um, on that page, there's a free guidebook on how to start your own podcast. It's a lot of the stuff we talked about today. So you, if you were writing notes, I probably should have told you you don't need to because it's all in a, in a guidebook. <laughs> Sorry about that. So uh, yeah, so on that page, you'll be able to download that. You have to give your email address, um, uh, which really shouldn't be a problem, I would imagine. So now when I talk to you, I want to go on my little marketing rant here. Real quick before you do, sorry, one, one other okay, thing that's relevant. <laughs> um, people are asking if you recommend during a podcast taking audience calls or questions. Is that something you've ever done or, or that you recommend other people do? So there, let me make sure it's clear that a podcast is not a live thing. You record a podcast, you edit it, everything, and then you put it out to the world. So you can do whatever you want, but having live guests doesn't really make sense. If what you meant by that question was, can you, can you uh, on your podcast channel or by email or social media say, what would you like me to talk about in my podcast? Um, that is a fabulous idea. One of our podcasters in Silicon Valley area is in California is a, an accounting firm. They're the only non-financial advisor podcaster client we have. Um, and they were brought there by their financial advisor who shares an office and they, um, they, they do, um, they refer each other a ton of business. And so I started doing, we started doing this podcast with these guys. The best podcast they did was a Q and a one about two weeks ago. And, uh, it was fabulous. I mean, they're wonderful guys, a little bit dry. They are accountants. I don't mean to beat up on accountants. I just mean you're very, you know, you're very technical oriented. Uh, they're, they're great guys. And I thought it was their best podcast they'd done. Um, I loved it. And I made sure I gave them a ton of praise and uh, shared it um, socially. Um, so I was really proud of those guys. So I think, yes, the answer is if you can do something like that, get your audience. If you want to just make up the questions. If you know what question, uh, what questions clients and prospects ask you in an office, in your office, just put those out into the world. It's a great idea for topics. The only thing is, is once you've done it, make sure in your show notes that you tell you say, what, here's what questions we're going to be answering. You might even want to put the time we, you, that they're answering. Uh, you may or may not want to do that, but definitely make sure in your show notes for your podcast, you talk about the kinds of things you're going to talk about. If you just say we're going to answer a bunch of questions, that's not very inviting, right? And that's also a great tip for um, SEO in general. When you, yeah. if you're, you know, most of you are going to take these podcasts and in addition to having them live on Podbean or SoundCloud, you're going to put them on your website. Um, and we will tell you that you should definitely have the show notes listed and in a summary of the podcast, if you want to get even better SEO traction for those keywords. So if you do a whole podcast about a specific topic, let's say like divorce and finance, um, you know, those keywords that you're using 
you can write up a quick summary and make that in your title header and everything, and you'll have a much better chance of um, ranking for those keywords from that podcast than if you don't because search engines can't crawl the audio file itself. Perfect. Any other questions for me? There's other questions, but I think we'll let you go through this, and then they're much okay. all kind of seem to be more technical, so we can go through them at the end. Perfect. Um, I get a lot of questions about, about ROI. How many leads can I expect? A lot of people talk to me about lead generation. They talk to me about ROI. And I will say that um, I think it's a brilliant question, and it's one that you, you have to be able to answer. And here's how I like to answer that. I don't think measuring, directly measuring um, ROI is the most important thing to focus on. I think it's momentum and I think momentum you can feel, you can measure it if you want to, but you can feel it. It's hard to attribute momentum sometimes to where it came from. But if you're a business person, you're a financial advisor, you will know when momentum is turning into something. You don't need to measure it. When you need to measure something is when you're worried about the cost being so high that you're not getting much and you'll know when that's the case. So I, I think for most business people, especially financial advisors, you will know when something is working, won't you? You'll know that you have a ton of opportunities. They're all wonderful opportunities versus opportunities to waste your mind. I'm getting into that in a second. So to me, the most important mindset and the most important thing that you want to be asking yourself and the most important thing you want to be striving for is momentum in your business. If you can constantly be driving momentum in your business, you will have a ton of success and you won't ever look back. The problem is, is that advisors and business owners in general, we want to start analyzing everything. It's good to analyze it, but you should be able to feel it. You should know. And you want to look for marketing that makes you feel great and you know that it's working, that it's working. So um, the, the thing about momentum is it creates awareness. So let me give you an example. If you're doing a podcast, you're building momentum. If you're doing social media, you're building momentum. If you're running events in your community and you're publishing those and you're doing digital marketing and creating hype and sharing that socially and talking about it in your podcast, you're creating momentum. If you're sharing your influencers content on their website and their, their intelligence, stuff like that, you're building momentum. If you're bringing guests onto your podcast who have an audience that you'd love to work with, you're building momentum, right? If you, if you're, when you start doing all these things, you're building momentum. Yeah, as long as they are not uh, terribly expensive, and you're not consuming a ton of your time in your business, you're building momentum. So you're not building momentum when you're worried about the cost all the time. You're not building momentum when you're spending a ton of time overseeing your marketing. You're not, you're not, you're not building momentum when you have uh, 10 leads coming in and nine of them are junk, right? I, I remember I just called those leads instead of opportunities. <laughs> so, you know, just think about that. Momentum is, is when, when good things are happening uh, and the cost isn't killing you and, uh, and you're getting opportunities. Momentum introduces you to a lot of people. So if you're doing good, the right amount of momentum, you're getting into, a lot of people are becoming aware of you. They're not just becoming aware of you as an advisor, they're coming aware of you as a niche expert, niche expert who worked with a niche expertise. And please, in your business, if you do anything this year, narrow your focus, narrow where you're, where you're smart. Doesn't mean you have to give up everything you do, but tell people what you spend all your time on. That's a, that's a topic for a webinar for another day, but uh, having a, a narrower focus and a narrow audience means more money, I guarantee you. Um, momentum introduces you to more people. And I, in a second here, I'm going to, actually, I'll do it right now. I'm on my LinkedIn. I'm not going to name names, but I'm going to actually go through the last 10 or 15 messages uh, I have through LinkedIn. So I just talked with a guy this morning. He's at the top of the list. He owns a, he owns a website. Uh, he wants me to contribute. He reached out to me wants me to contribute content and get me free leads to agents and advisors. He says he's starving for guys like me who are um, thought leaders in marketing and he wants my content papers, wants me to do webinars. I don't have to pay him anything. He just wants me to create value on his website so that more agents and advisors get value out of it and they come. That happened, because, that happened through LinkedIn. Uh, another guy here, um, he was introduced to me by a guy at an IMO. Uh, wants to do our, one of our brand, wants us to help him with his brand and his website. And he want, he has a radio broadcaster. He has a radio show. He wants to convert that to a podcast, uh, lives in Texas. He came through an IMO and guess what? The guy that at the IMO that keeps referring me business, he likes my stuff on LinkedIn like crazy. He, he cause I'm constantly sharing value, putting it out into the world. He likes it. I'm top of mind with this guy all the time. 
sent me three leads in the last two weeks. Sorry, three opportunities in the last three weeks. Um, and they're and they're perfect people for me, for for my company, right? So I, I'm not going through conversations with people who who aren't right. And even if they weren't, I would still try to help them. By the way, um, another guy, um, I can't remember why he called. Next guy has a content company. He was uh, produces all kinds of really cool content. Has a really neat magazine for financial advisors to to go after high net worth people. They were on our podcast a couple of weeks ago, and that will be coming out in an episode on, uh, I think tomorrow, either tomorrow or next week. So he reached out to me through LinkedIn. Another person who runs a business uh, helping people get leads on LinkedIn, and because she came to me, she's actually going to show us how we can add more value to our advisor relationships by learning what she's doing. We're already doing most of it, but she does it a little differently. She's actually going to teach us how to do what she does. Is that crazy or what? She hasn't had a lot of success in the fan, with working with financial advisors. She's going to teach us. So she, we're a competitor, but because of, of, of my profile and, and how um, open I was to the conversation, how we live in abundance, she's going to be living in abundance with us. How, how cool is that? So we're, we're learning more. I always look for opportunities to learn from what other people are doing so we can help advisors even more. Uh, another guy was a, a lead, uh, sorry, an opportunity who came through LinkedIn. His name was Paul. And I sent him a proposal a couple of weeks ago. This next guy I was talking to, he's a PR guy in New York. He actually met me through LinkedIn about five years ago. He, he gave me a referral to the biggest marketing client I ever had, which is a money manager in New Jersey. They grew like crazy. We did all kinds of wonderful work for them. It was a blast working for them. That guy met me in LinkedIn. And within two months, he sent me my biggest uh, contract I've ever had in my company. Um, Another guy who's a financial advisor who has his own podcast, but he podcasts on marketing to help other advisors. He's got his own uh, um, uh, system, his own CRM system. And he had me on his podcast and we, we did it live. He did a really cool podcast. He actually broadcast it live on Facebook and he had it on, um, uh, what's that one that starts with P, that video, the video one, Samantha, you probably know what it's called. Via Twitter. No, it's the video, the video app. Periscope? Not per, uh, yeah, Periscope. So he did it live through Periscope. I was looking on my phone too. Um, so that was really fun doing it with him. And he had a whole different, he had, a, he had a little bit different way of doing a podcast. So that guy I met through LinkedIn. And you know what? He had listened to my podcast. That's how we found out about us. Um, I just keep going on and on with people. You know, here's a podcaster I talked about earlier. She's been doing her own podcast for women for years. And then she signed up with us a couple of days ago. So we're, we're, we're rebuilding her brand and her websites. And then we're going to be launching her podcast through our systems. We're going to take over her systems. She had six people running her marketing. Now we're doing it for her. Um, and she's absolutely thrilled. And we're doing it for about 2,500 less a month than they were. So if, if you're listening to this, I think you need to definitely go. You can see the way our names are spelled. Connect with Kurt, connect with me on LinkedIn. And, um, you know, watch the kind of content that we share, how we like and comment on other people's um, posts. And like Kirk said, just being abundant in the wealth of knowledge that you share and the content that you share and try to replicate that within your own networks and the, you know, the thought leadership that you can provide. Because I think that is, as you mentioned before, something a lot of people struggle with too is um, what do I share? What do I talk about? I mean, we do have when you get to the end of this, some questions people have actually about how this can all tie into being compliant as well. Yep. I'm almost done here. I, I wasn't, tr I'm, I wasn't trying to brag about all those opportunities. Um, what I'm trying to uh, get across is that I don't try to measure where everything exactly where it came from, because I'm doing, I try to do all kinds of good things. I try to focus on creating a lot of value uh, and taking the right actions every day to be a, a professional and to help people along the way. And in doing that, it creates momentum in my business. And that momentum inspires me, inspires my audience, inspires people to refer us. And that's where I think marketing and business um, lives is when you can create momentum, you're doing all the right things for the right reasons. And if you can focus on that, if you can shift your mindset away from constantly trying to attract this ROI um, and how am I going to, how many leads am I going to get? And, um, focus on doing the right things and everything else will follow. Uh, and the right momentum also influences people because sometimes the opportunity isn't ready to be an opportunity with you. But um, if you're doing the right things over time, you'll continue to influence them to that point, right? And when the opportunity is right, 
that's the only time you want to work with somebody anyway. Leads seem to be about pushing somebody to say yes, and then you trying to push moving forward. You want opportunities, not leads in your business. And opportunities aren't always as cut and dry, aren't always cut and dry, right? Sometimes they're centers of influence. Sometimes they're not people who are perfect for you, but they can hook you up. Sometimes it's a, it's a solution provider. There's all kinds of opportunities out there. You got to be uh, live with abundance, uh, create value for everybody. And that's huge. Momentum expands your universe. All the people that, that know me now because of people I've met and, and, and tried to create value for, it just keeps expanding. My pod, our podcast, Top Advisor Marketing, uh, at the, our one year anniversary, we had just hit the, just happened to have hit the 20,000 download mark. I would never believe that we had had 20,000 downloads um, at the, when we started this within a year. And we had 100,000 uh, feed hits, which means people through their, their uh, podcast players pinged our podcast to, to look at it 100,000 times in the first year. So that, um, that's a one, those are wonderful numbers, but those don't mean anything. What means something to me is all the people that I'm meeting and why they're calling me and how they talk to me. They don't talk to me. They talk to me like um, I'm an expert, uh, hopefully that I am. And that's a much more, it's a great way to start a relationship. The other thing about momentum, I think it's the most important thing is I think it's a lot of fun. If it doesn't look like I'm having fun even doing this webinar, hopefully, hopefully it's obvious. Um, <laughs> I think when business is fun, um, that's a heck of a great place to be. And I, I have not had as much fun in my business as I have had since I started podcasting a year ago. It's a great outlet. And I wish more than anything for you guys to have fun and enjoy your joy marketing, enjoy growing your business and stop feeling so stressed out. And I think if you do this, I think if you experiment with podcasting on your own and you figure out how to start it for yourself, it's going to have a huge impact. The end. Thank you. Well, it's not the end yet, so nobody go anywhere. Um, we have some questions that I think a lot of you are going to want to know the answer to. Um, the first is just talking, and maybe if you want to pull up your own um, Top Advisor Marketing Podbean profile so people can see what that looks like as we go through these, um, just in case any of you have never used Podbean or SoundCloud, this is where your podcast would actually be hosted. Um, so this is one example of another yeah. advisor, correct? So I'm, yeah, I'm going to show you this, but please don't, um, please don't start calling this guy up, download all this stuff, because it's, I wouldn't want that for any of you once you've worked with us. Um, just look at his stuff and you're welcome to listen to a podcast. I don't mean that. Just don't go start downloading his paper and looking at all that stuff. I'd appreciate it. But um, uh, so this guy, his uh, web podcast is called Retire Right. He's had 15 episodes. Um, he was a, it was a former CPA. Um, he is, um, he's really having fun doing a podcast. And one of the things that he's getting his best um, results from is he's inspiring a lot of his uh, colleagues. So peers as in centers of influence to share his podcast with their clients. And they're absolutely loving that they're um, that this financial advisor has a podcast that he shares a lot of super useful information. He's a really bright guy. And um, they love that. This, you know, um, so uh, that's where he's having his biggest wins. I mean, he's been doing this so two a month. So he's at uh, seven months, and he's got twenty eight hundred downloads, uh, fifteen episodes. So he's doing great, and he's getting results. It doesn't really matter how many downloads you have. Actually, what matters is you create momentum in your business, and that's happening in a big way for him. His his actual website is Heller Wealth Management. Um, we designed this. This happens to be a 20 over 10 website, of course. Um, they just, did happened really, just happened to be. Yep. So his, his tagline, we created all of his brand. Uh, we created all the content for his site and some of these concepts and graphics. And then we hand this off to 20 over 10 and they pulled it together brilliantly. I wanted to show you this part here. We actually, uh, 20 over 10 has a feed from, um, I think it's Podbean, but you might be able to do other podcast feeds too. If I, you can uh, do right. SoundCloud and Podbean the easiest. Yeah. The so website. Yeah. You're definitely going to want at least one of those two or, or both of them. So you can feed either one of them into there. So you can click here to get, um, to listen to his latest podcast and these automatically update with the latest three. So it's no work for you. Once it's set up, it just organizes itself. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's how that looks. So here's my um, landing page for this, our podcasting service. Um, some ideas here, what we do, um, 
some more specifics into exactly what you get. And then the pricing is over here. So uh, we have a setup fee that includes um, all this stuff here, which is your, your own personal podcast brand. We're going to or your, uh, name your podcast graphics, set up your channels. Uh, we're going to do initial podcast interview to get you warmed up. Uh, we're going to professionally have a professionally recorded intro two podcasts per month. We're going to send you all your equipment. That's part of the price, part of the, the fee. And we're going to coach you on podcasting or you're going to have your own professional podcast host. So you, for, so the very first episode you would um, sort of be on the episode with them. Is that how that works? Or? We'll be on it as long as they want to. Um, okay. Yeah. Our, those accounting guys in uh, Silicon Valley, to be honest, they just, they just went it alone. So they, there's two partners there. And now they're, they're, they're doing it without our host. And that new person I was just talking about who, who's been running a podcast for years and the radio guy was talking about, they don't need us. We're just going to be in the, we're, but we're going to coach them if we think there's some stuff they can do better, but they're going to record it themselves. Then they just send the file over. We edit it, splice it all together and then do our thing. Make sense? Great. Yep. Yeah. So it's eight ninety five uh, a month if you're, if you're doing two podcasts a month and all the stuff you get for production, publishing, all that's up here. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. One of the things I always think is interesting is on your website, people will always ask me about like having a video and they'll go and spend all this money on a high quality production video that just is on their homepage. Yep. And while I think there can be a place for that, you know, when you hear somebody's voice in your ear while you're you know, making dinner, or if you just even check out their website mm -hmm. and go back and listen to a couple episodes, there's something so much more intimate about that, that somebody can get to know you and that authenticity really comes through. Yeah. Um, some of you might already be doing that with video, right? Like creating a video blog series um, rather than just a one highly produced video. And I think that, you know, comes through as well mm -hmm. in a podcast. Um, so I know we're coming to the top of the hour here, so I want to get we through are. the questions. Um, Compliance, how people have a lot of questions about that. You know, how can, how do you handle compliance? Or if you're not handling it, Kirk, um, with the clients that you work with, how do you um, encourage others to handle compliance? Do they have yep. to get their script approved or? Pretty, pretty easy, yeah. yeah. So we, what we do is we use a transcription service. I forgot to mention that in my presentation, my apologies. Uh, we use Trint, T-R-I-N-T dot com. What we do is we transcribe every audio and then you can send that and we put it, we put that audio transcript in your uh, folder. So you can send, we put everything in a folder and we give you the link to the folder in a, in a Google drive that we use and you send that off to compliance for approval. Um, we're not having many problems with compliance. It could be the types of advisors who are, who are deciding to use us, but we're not having any problems. Great. Perfect. Um, and then a couple other questions people had, um, somebody said, do you really need to start a podcast to benefit from their popularity? This is from Carla LaFleur. She said, is there a podcasting service similar, more like to the PR service Haro, uh, where I can connect pod to podcasting journalists who may want to use my firm's advisors as a source or a speaker? That's an incredible idea. I was sharing that with somebody earlier today. If you can find, if you don't want to start your own podcast, have somebody in your office, a PR firm would do this too have somebody go out there and search for people who would want you to be a guest on their podcast. Absolutely. It's a, it's a, it's a great idea. I mean, that's completely free outside of the time it takes to go find all those people and then right. communicate, get on there. But yeah, it's a great idea. We do that a little bit, but mostly people find us and ask us to be there, which right now I prefer. Um, but certainly we want to do that. Okay, great. Another question. Um, Scott Killian asked is the best way to get, an attraction to a podcast by creating, you know, polarity of emotion. So extreme like or dislike of a topic, or is it better mm -hmm. to just think about having guest presenters? I, I, that's a great question. And it's one that um, I'm not sure I'm going to give you the answer that you like. I, I think, I think as a financial advisor, you need to be yourself. I think polarity is not a good thing, but the most successful podcasters who want to be full-time podcasters, the more, the more you want to be a podcaster, not a financial advisor, I'd say the polarity would probably be more applicable. But if you're a financial advisor, your compliance department's definitely going to want you to be maybe not in the middle, but um, maybe not on the, on the extremes. Um, I think that you can have a lot of conviction um, where, wherever you sit on that scale um, and still be very interesting and engaging. So I think those are media tactics 
Um, and we might now call those Trumpisms. Sorry, I went there. You're, you're, you're uh, playing to the polarity there. Yeah, I mean, it's just too obvious, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> I never talk so, politics. And <laughs> so thank you so much for all of your um, incredible feedback and input today, Kirk. I learned a lot too. 20 over 10 does not have a podcast, but maybe 2018 will be the year we start one. Um, we do offer these webinars every single months and bring in interesting guest speakers like Kirk. Um, so if you want to sign up for our next one, um, you know, just visit our website and click on webinars. And um, every month we have a new one that we will speak on a different topic or have somebody else come in and, and talk. Um, we'll be sending this out via email tomorrow and it will also be up on our blog and we'll include all of the links that um, Kirk has um, so graciously shared with us with about equipment and what you need to buy. Um, and also the link to his podcasting service at Top Advisor Marketing. If you have additional questions after the webinar, feel free to email us um, through the sign up um, link that you had, and we will be sure to either get those questions to Kirk or answer them for you. So thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Kirk. Um, really enjoyed it today. Thank you very much. Hope to be back talking to your audience again real soon. Thank you. Absolutely.